Coming up on the Digital Lifestyle Show 769, we've got a lot to talk about. Gary's here and he'll be talking about his IFA trip to Berlin, his first in a show, in-person show for a while. And what he's seen there, uh, there's ARM chips, uh, ARM used for Windows, uh, including Surface devices. We'll be talking about some rumoured Surface devices, we're talking about Surface Duo. Uh, we've got some Windows Insider news, we've got a uh, new keyboard coming to Windows 10, we've got uh, 20H2 updates, and we've got the Xbox news as well, Xbox Series S to £49, sounds a good price to me. And uh, we've got lots to talk about, so let's get straight to Gary. Gary, good evening. Good evening, Ian. It's good to be back. Back in the country, safe and sound. Yeah, yeah. This, it was uh, an interesting experience going abroad. I, I, I have to say it was really well organised, the EFA event in Berlin, or IFA event. They seem to have changed, changed the way they pronounce it now. They used to be, we all used to say EFA, but they said IFA all the way through this one. So I'm going to say oh, IFA. Right. <laughs> and, uh, um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, definitely a, an interesting event. Very, very well organised. Lots of really good... Um, social distancing in all the halls very much easier than any other ever ifi event i've ever been to as a press press person to get around because they only ever use two halls to actually hold hold the presentation so instead of having to traipse miles around the venue and try and find the next press conference in time to get to it you just literally walk from yeah. one hall to the next hall to the next one it, it was just all really well set up and uh, and some very good conferences and, and it actually meant that there was some good presentations from smaller organizations who perhaps wouldn't have got a, a look in before um which i thought was really quite good and uh, yeah some good yeah. stuff in there and I, I guess i mean that's it's part of the fun but it's also it makes it really when you go to a it's so oh, everywhere's crowded and like you said you've got to go you want to mm. go to the samsung event you've got to get there early but you can't get there early because you're still at some desk and, and you know there's so many people there uh, so i suppose having the having that um you know reduced crowd makes it a lot easier to never get around and it's serious yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it made it meant I saw every key, every no, uh, presentation basically, which normally I would never get to do because you miss four or five just moving between venues, parts of the venue. Mm-hmm. So, and, and normally you don't get a chance to get around the exhibition and do the presentation. It's, it's usually you have to sort to actually do a good job of even normally I have a normally you actually have to have four or five men, people with you <laughs> to, to actually get mm-hmm. around everything. And so this time it was a lot easier, and, and it made for some very interesting presentations. Um, all, all around so uh, they started off with a, a keynote from uh, qualcomm which i thought was very interesting because they announced the 86cx gen 2 uh, compute platform and acer were there to show off their next uh, swift 7 which is going to have this this processor in it um and uh, it looks really impressive actually i have to say very long battery life they're talking multiple day battery life on it um obviously arm based um mm. Gen Gen two um, 5G connectivity, um, which obviously is, is the future. Also, there's um, millimeter wave uh, 5G as well, which is going to be an interesting product. It's uh, obviously in the UK we're only sub six sub six um, gigahertz um, 5G at the moment, but I think the the, the millimeter wave stuff is going to come. Um, which which uh, there's lots of advantages of it, which I. Uh, more to do with the technicals of how you transmit it than the actual devices but it's definitely worth having um but yeah it's, it's got lots of stuff built into it um it's it's uh it's got um echo cancellation and noise, suppre- noise suppression built into the, the the technology for handling the microphone how it handles massive camera technology tech uh, dual 4k displays easily um all, all on an ARM chip, chip. So it's doing a lot of the stuff that the Intel chipsets used to do, um, mm. or have been doing, which the, the, the ARM chips haven't been able to do, and, and doing, but doing them probably better. Um, and, it, and it's got um, support for hypervisor and all sorts of things in there as well. So it looked impressive, I have to say. Um, and that's what, potentially what the next Surface Pro X would be using. Yes, yes, indeed. And what was really interesting, we had had uh, Panos drop in on this this uh, press conference um, with with the Qualcomm guys, and basically one of the things he said was expect lots more no- news about ARM Windows on ARM in the next few weeks. 
Mm. So we've got a couple of conferences coming up. I wonder if Ignite's going to have some mention of stuff for, for, for ARM, which uh, would be good to see. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Acer guys were very excited about this. So I think, think there's some really good stuff coming on on this line. Yeah, the Swift 7. I've always liked the Swift line. And I think this, with the Swift 7 having the um, the ARM processor on there, that does make it um, sort of for a long battery life, good connectivity. I think that there are a lot of interesting stuff coming with uh, with with the ARM process. I, I, I've always um, liked the idea of having an always on connected Windows device. And I nearly got a Surface Pro X last year. But, um, yeah sort of bailed at the last minute because I couldn't kind of justify it. But um, mm -hmm. I think at some point these devices are going to get good enough to, to that they make the sort of the ultimate sort of device to carry around with you. I mean, perhaps not traveling as much as you used to, but yeah, it, it does make for a, a good device that uh, someone could take with them all day and, you know, make good use of. It does, yeah, yeah, and and it's, uh, it certainly makes for an, an interesting lot of range, range of products which are coming soon. And I think we're, we're not just talking about surface projects here. Obviously, Ace have picked up up on this, which is interesting because I think that's to, to start getting a new generation of ARM PC tab, tablets and PCs out there is, is really good to see. And and a lot of other people were, were talking about doing, using it as well. So. I think it's, it's going to be really good to see that. Now, the other thing which we did make an appearance in, the, in this talk as well, well, from the Qualcomm guys, was a uh, Surface um, Duo, because the, the, um, the boss of Qualcomm said that as his favourite device of the moment. And I have to say, the way you, with his, in his big hands, it hangs it, hands it looks absolutely tiny and thin, <laughs> which is true. But I'm obviously, we've talked about this at length last week. And it, but I have to say, seeing it, in a closer up shot because obviously he wasn't live there but he was the video was massive <laughs> in, in, in the hall so um it's like being in cinema um to see that that how thin and, and nice looking it is you can see where the premium level, level of it is and you can see how it's going to yeah. be attractive as a as a, as a style a, a statement almost um obviously we, we, the specs aren't, aren't there but hopefully next year um we will see see uh, improvements in that line, but uh, yeah, very, very interesting all round around the Qualcomm talk. And that, uh, to be honest, that was really the only bit bit of the this, the, the event which was particularly um, PC oriented uh, or that that are sort of consumer tech. There, there was a lot of other stuff going on there. High MD did a really good talk about what they're doing with um, EVs etc. Probably should obviously interest in me. Um, and then, and then the, the, you've got a lot of stuff around uh, white goods, effectively. There was a really, uh, there's a lot of innovation going on in the white good areas, but not the connected uh, work going on. Some very nice apps, actually. I have to say, I was, uh, I'm not usually impressed with apps from sort of uh, OEM manufacturers, but the higher um, app they've got to integrate all this stuff was really nicely done. Very, very good to look at and actually worked very well. Um, so I was impressed with that. And there's, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful innovations going on. I mean, LG obviously were keeping up with the trends and had a, had a um, portable um, respirator you could have effectively in a mask. Um, very neatly done. But um, but they also they also had some very interesting stuff they do in fridges where they could keep food fresher for a lot longer. Um, I mean, they were talking about potentially four weeks for keeping fruit fresh in your fridge, mm. which, which is yeah, obviously quite an interesting thing and then there's there's sort of weird and wonderful stuff there the, the there's a, a company which uh, his name's just completely escaped me but it's basically in japanese it, it's something like i would like to have this is the company <laughs> and, and they actually come from um a silicon uh, manufacturing background um so they they their products are are based on the technology for use used to make chips and it's all to do with, with static electricity and and they've kind of found ways of using that as a, a as a cleaning technology so that one of their products is actually clean shoes for example so you just put this thing in, in inside your shoe and it, it gets rid of all the smells and the odors very easily um and they had this this flying um drone which was actually an air purifier it just flew hand house <laughs> purifier and i mean that's an interesting concept but i mean that's that, i think that's probably a bit of an extreme way from purifying air but the the concept of integrated technology doing things like that so health benefit type of things which obviously in the current um 
way we are at the moment, people are more probably more conscious of that. I mean, one of the things mm-hmm. I, I quite like, Hire have acquired the Hoover brand. And, and one, one of the things they did with the Hoover brand is they've now got an integrated system where you've got a robot vacuum cleaner and an air filter. And the robot vacuum cleaner can clean, will clean the floor and the air filter will go and, and this is a robot air filter, so it, it, will, it drives around your house. And if you've got sort of a, a bad area, air area, you can say, OK, the system will work out whether that's the dust on the floor causing the bad air or if it's air coming in and take the right thing to do to, do the <laughs> to go clean it up. I mean, those sort of things are quite cool. There's, there's a bit of science fiction to them, um, but I actually they're an integration which actually works and and they're in a consumer product. This isn't a, this isn't a smart home product. This isn't anything else. This is this is Hoover's brands going forward. This is the stuff they will be shipping. Um, as as their standard stuff out to, out to the retail, um, every every higher group product, and that's from candy at the bottom all, all the way up to high at the top, will have integrations with this this new app and and be able to do you be able to do things cross cross platforms. I mean things like they were talking about um, recognizing uh, the brands of of, of stuff you you uh, put in your fridge or you use. Um, sort of camera recognition to to do other things as well. Wine wine racks actually recognise what wine you've got. Recommend different wines based on what wine you've got in your in your, in your system. I mean the the one which which a lot of people um, when I tweeted about it said well I don't really want that was the, the idea they've actually got a, a cooker with a, a, a camera poke facing down which will recognise what you're putting in the cooker and, and set the uh the the temperatures and things you need to do to cook whatever you've just put into it <laughs> i think that's it that was actually lg who had that but that, but that, those sort of things are, are very interesting that whole sort of level of consumer integration which is coming along um but yeah i mean it, it was an interesting event there's some there's some good stuff some 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 weird talks as well um Actually, one one talk I really did like, um, com- company Shift Mobile, German phone manufacturer, who are, whose uh, remit is is that they are trying to produce phones which are repairable. So they they, they, they don't <laughs> right. they, they, when you're throwing away your phone, they want to be able to repair it. And it's and it's also modular as well, so you can choose what bits you want in it, um, which I thought was good. And, but what I was really impressed with their talk, they managed to talk for, for I think 50 minutes. Only mentioning the, their product for thirty seconds of that fifty minutes, because <laughs> most of it was a fairly inspirational talk <laughs> about the environment. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, overall, very, very good, and some good stuff around around on the stand as well. I mean, I, I had a walk, wander around. There's a thing they call um, e- e for Next or IFA Next and Shift Mobility, which is a look at the sort of future tech stuff and some really intriguing sort of smaller brand products there. Um, Everything from treadmills for your cat, which, I love, which actually is is actually quite a sensible idea. Apparently, cat, obesity in cats is a big thing at the moment. <laughs> right. So yeah. This is actually developed by a vet, vet and it's a, it's a treadmill, but it's it's done in such a way that it attracts a cat onto it, and it's actually there's a lot of cat. I can't remember if there's such a thing as cat psychology, but that's barely what they were using to get it working. That uh, that work that was quite interesting. Um, they had, I mean, was sort of things which technology reaching in areas where perhaps it hasn't reached before. Um, there was a a baby bottle, which I thought, I, I, I thought this was really clever. It basically was a self heating baby bottle, so you don't have all this thing of if you if you if you've got if you're a parent of small kid, kid, tiny kids, you sometimes you have this yeah. whole problem of having to heat up milk on the road moon. Don't have to do this. You just oh, press a button and, yeah. and it does it for you. Um, and that, that's oh, a that sim- was always a nightmare. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that's a, a long time ago for you, but it's, it's a simple, uh, thing, yeah. a simple thing. Um, which really, um, that's a that's a clever bit of technology. Um, I even said, as far as I say, that's a fascinating te- piece of technology because we will be covering yeah. that one. Um, and there's a lot of other things. And um, one of the things which definitely was big, big was was e mobility stuff. So this isn't. I'm not talking about cars here, although there were a couple of cars on display. But this is more the cargo bike thing. This is definitely big this year. Um, the idea of, of delivering things with a bike and a trailer, but with electrical electric assistance. And and that right, was yeah, very like delivery type things. But... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but what was noticeable, and, and I think this is particularly good for the weather, and the weather in Berlin was foul, so <laughs> it got a good chance to test this. Um, they all had covers, so you, the ones I saw. So you, you basically, the driver was definitely covered all the time, which was good. Mm. So yeah, I, I thought that, that, that there was a lot of good stuff there in 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 the small world. Um, 
So, and and there was a couple of, I mean, there was, there was a, I'm, I'm, I'll get more information on this because they're going to talk to them after the event, but there's a company which is producing custom PCs uh, again, but not custom PCs in, in terms of what goes in them, but, or, but, but what the case is. So basically you can have a case made to, made to your own personal design. Oh, um, right, yeah. And apparently PC building is back in. I mean, I know you've mentioned this in, in terms of your son, son yeah. gaming, but the, the, it's apparently big in, back in in a big way. So that, that was uh, uh, something which was noticeable I, as well. I think um, I think flight sims had a little something to do. People build, you know, building. You've seen, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter now, you know, going back to gaming PCs and building gaming PCs. Whether it's because it's just where the consoles are in their phase of development, or just it's just something. It's quite fun to do, and so uh, yeah. yeah, I see a lot of people doing that now. Yeah, so that, that, I mean, all that all that stuff is, is really good to see that, that, that we're getting getting a lot of stuff like that. I mean, the, the other things were, I mean, one thing I did quite like in terms of the, the consumer products, and we've covered a lot of robot vacuums before, but um, there were a couple of quite good innovations in that. The Ecovac one, which I, I particularly like, because it's, it's now got a camera on the front, which actually will detect cables on the floor and avoid them. Which is the right. bane of any vac- robot vacuum. Yeah. Anyone who's got a robot vacuum, you know that you spend your life actually tucking the cables away so they don't get eaten. And this thing actually will use AI to actually um, or machine learning to work out where the um, the cables are. So I thought that that's that's quite clever stuff. But yeah, it, I mean, it was a very different show this year, so there wasn't as much to find. To find and certainly none of the big PC manufacturers were there. Um, so you didn't have the aces of the, the world actually doing their showing their stuff off like they would normally be, but still very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I saw some of your pictures as well and your tweets. Yeah, it is good to see. And I, I, these gadget stuff sometimes they start off a bit improbable and a bit clunky, but you know yeah. eventually they, they they often work their way into a mainstream. Um, into mainstream sort of consumer products. I mean, you only have to walk into being Q now and you see robot. Uh, lawn mowers you yeah, know on a yeah. stand so that they're get, kind of getting everywhere now yeah and, and you're definitely noticeable that there was a lot more consumer focused communication tech going on so i mean that was the other, the other big thing uh, which I, we, we will probably cover in a future show because i think they're going to come back on again but the, remember we spoke to tp link a, a year or so ago about mm. all the stuff they were doing well, they've they've moved on quite a lot with their, their stuff now they've got uh, the, the the new deco decos out which have got um Obviously, Wi-Fi six in, which is the big thing um, on that. Oh but yeah, they, I want to try that because my phone got does Wi-Fi six. I want to try yeah. something with Wi-Fi six. <laughs> well, there's, there's a deco uh, set set with Wi-Fi six, but they've also got a deco with a built-in five G router, which I think is a, a very interesting concept. So, yeah. So, so obviously five G is coming fairly shortly, and we've got all the different varieties of that. But having a a, a 5G router in a in a mesh network simplifies things so much. No no need to connect up to broadband. If you if you're in a 5G coverage area, just plug your SIM in. Well, yes, you don't need to have a SIM. You just have your eSIM, and and away you go. So I think that that's that's an interesting concept that they were coming up with there. So I thought there's, they definitely had some interesting stuff, and they also had some really good stuff um, on the business line of, of things. With some with some really good management tools for more business-like um, networking but i also thought for the prosumer type market mm. so for people like me and you where we need need better quality of networking at home uh, and especially if you're streaming the, the idea of the vlan type things but how they could manage it was very clever um yeah so some interesting stuff there um the other thing that tp link had was a new a new start a smart home range which they've just introduced as well so, which I can't quite figure out why they've got two completely distinct ranges, but they've, they've certainly had some interesting bits and pieces in that. So, uh, so that, that's an interesting side of things. And that that was the other thing which was there in big in big letters this year: smart home. There was a lot of smart home providers. Um, it, it's noticeable that in Europe is that 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 is now mainstream. Everybody's yeah. using Wi-Fi switches, Wi-Fi sockets, that sort of stuff. And there was a lot more Wi-Fi type bits being being yeah, out there. Um, I've completely forgotten the name of the company, but there's a company which has got a sensor, um, which actually will, which is a Wi-Fi sensor. And then, you know, you know how much challenge it is to get Wi-Fi to work mm. um, long term on batteries. This is a battery-based Wi-Fi sensor which will last a year on one set of batteries. 
Mm, oh, that looks good. And the smart smart motion technique type mm. stuff as well. So um, Shelley, that's it. That's, that's, that's the company, Shelley um, Home Automation. And again, we'll be re- reviewing those at some point. At least that's not a tech world. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I think there's, there's some definitely good, good stuff out there. It was, it was well worth going anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So it, it, it's sometimes it's good to get in these in-person events, and when they're not as crowded, then you certainly get more benefits, I think, out of it. Yeah, you get to meet a lot of people and chat and chat, which is quite yeah. good. Um, as I said, social distance, because it was very well done, very well, well yeah. very well organised in that respect. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That that perhaps hope maybe gives us an idea of how they can organise these events in the future, because I don't think the situation is going to change at the moment. No, 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 time, no time soon, I think. Yeah. Now, um, we do have some other news that broke today, and um, this is something Richard was going to talk about a bit, but because I was moving the sofa for someone, uh, I went up really late, so we missed Richard. We'll have Richard back next week, but uh, the Xbox Series X that is kind of rumoured um, um, best kept secret kind of thing for a while, or well, or worst kept secret, I should say, for a while, because everybody kind of knew that there was a cheaper Xbox Series coming. Um, Apparently, it was the, some of the info leaked. So Microsoft just announced the details. I think it was mm. um, overnight. Uh, so, so when I opened, fired up the browser this morning, there were the details. So this is the Xbox Series S. So that's going to be the lower priced version of the next gen Xbox. So we already know about the Series X, but this is the first time we know about the Series X, that uh, Series S. Smaller, uh, mm-hmm. physical footprint looks smaller. Um, actually, I think it's going to be quite small when you see it it's smaller than the current xbox mm. uh, so that's going to be quite interesting to see how that scales up in white with a black sort of vent cooling vent on it um, yeah, it's a weird look <laughs> it is yeah um, well one of my sons when i asked him about it, he said well i like it he said no i don't like it it's terrible yeah. but <laughs> but i guess you'll get used to it and that's probably in, in person it might look not looks so uh, stand out but uh but the, i think the best thing i've seen 249 pounds for, for yeah UK that's price. incredible when you actually look what's inside it i mean you, you can't buy yeah. you can't buy the the, the graphics chip for, for, yeah. for pc for that price it's 120 uh frames per second ray tracing 4k media streaming 4k game upscaling yeah um no drive bay on it no so, you know no deep no blu-ray or DVD yeah, no, no, drive no, or anything like that. No, no physical, physical. Yeah. yeah, and I think the cheap one as I think it's I saw a 512 gig storage for the um, 249 pound one, mm. uh, which sounds quite a lot, but some of these games are huge on the Xbox. Yeah. Um, so I can imagine, but they've got that special expansion technology that they talked about a while ago with that with those expansion options. So, and I, and I would imagine there's probably a slightly more expensive one that maybe gives you. Yeah, uh, maybe a terabyte or two terabyte or something like that. And then I think the rumor was the Series X. They haven't confirmed prices yet, but that might be four nine nine dollars. So maybe that equates to four hundred ninety nine pounds, something like that. So yeah. that's going to be a decent price as well. But I think for if you haven't got a f- probably a real top end monitor, then there's probably the Series X is probably the one to one to go for. Um, mm. And the hardcore gamers, I understand. You know, perhaps we might go go with the the top of the end range one because they want the top of the range one, but for two forty nine for um for that, yeah. I mean, if you're just using it for a bit of light gaming and Netflix and Amazon and just as a little media console, it's not a bad yeah. price when you think where they where we've come from. Mm. And so, it looks looks fantastic. I think we need to get uh, Jason on to talk about that and uh, get some more details on it. So I'll try and see yeah. if I can. Uh, uh, set Jason upon that. Yeah, it does. Sound, it does sound really good. I mean, I mean, I, I'm obviously I, I use the Xbox Prime S for coming S primarily for Blu-ray playback. So I think yeah. just, missing that yeah. is actually one thing which is slightly there. But then again, I haven't played Blu-rays for a while yet. So recently, so it's... yeah. I mean, that's what I use mine for. But primarily, mine gets used for Netflix, Amazon. Mm. Um, all, all the media, Disney Plus, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. You know, so we use it kind of. And I know there's probably other solutions, but my Samsung TV is a Series 8. So I think it's got Netflix. I, ha- I don't know if it's got Amazon. I've not checked. And, it, and I certainly haven't checked if it's got the Disney Plus. But I use the Xbox. It's just a better device for that. So I don't know. It's a good price. Whether. Mm. 
Uh, next gen gaming and 4K upscaling. That's going to be um, going to be impressive. I just think that 512 might be a bit skinny for some yeah, of these uh, huge games. And I think poss- possibly the next some of the next gen game gaming may suffer with the, the slightly reduced, but well, actually substantially reduced um, graphic card performance over the X variant. Mm. Um, but even so, I mean, it's still a, a hulking beast um, mm. in, in terms of what, what you pay for that to get in PC form. I, I think I priced it up. And I, was, I was up to about seven hundred pounds when I worked out all the things you need to get to a PC. Yeah. So, so that, I, I, it's certainly one way of um, of going after Sony, isn't it? To have your your, your real two, you know, your cheap one that's got great specs and low mm. costs, and then yeah. you've got the premium one as well. So you give gamers the option to mm. you know to choose whichever they want they want. But I think for two forty nine, it's going to be on a lot of Christmas lists for oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. this year. November the tenth launch date, I think is. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll have to... <laughs> yeah exactly. We'll find out some more on that. I did ask for someone that built his own PC, but he, he's not really interested. Although I suspect it might get tempting as it as it gets the hype builds. But he yeah. he um, plays his game on PC, so he's quite happy with that. Yeah. Um, but you know the hype builds up, and maybe uh, and certainly I've got an original Xbox, so yeah. maybe that it's time for me to. Uh, original as in original Xbox One, not original. <laughs> <as I'm most laughs> on the... Not running XBMC on an original Xbox. <laughs> Although I, w- I wish I'd kept mine. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> and I had a few. I think I've still got a couple of 360s somewhere around mm-hmm. here, but uh, in the loft. Anyway, good, good, good to see and really um, impressive. And uh, I don't. Th- I think Microsoft were unhappy that they had to. That, that or this got leaked, but uh, and they were a hand was forced. But uh, it's just one of those things, I guess. Working for a global media platform release like this is not easy uh, the problem, to keep the problem, people. Yeah, the problem is they're keeping things secret far too long. I think they need to, to announce a little bit earlier. But then with the PlayStation side of things, they probably didn't want to announce too early because they yeah. just so any chance to come up with stuff. So it, it's tricky. I know it's very tricky. And, and, and there were too many people trying to keep a simple secret, which was where a lot of people were very keen to know the answer to. So, uh, yeah. Force yeah. hand, but that's not that's the first time that's happened this year. So I think there'll be uh, definitely be uh, things going on in Microsoft at the moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about a bit more of that when Rich is back. I'm not saying we'll maybe we can drag Jason out of retirement to uh, yeah. to talk to yeah. us about that as well. Uh, some uh, some other um, rumored devices that are on the way from Microsoft. Now this is no there's no official information on this, so this is a. a uh, a rumor is that there may be a cheaper Surface laptop on the way. Yeah, I heard that uh, as well. So, so I'd heard that from another source, which is interesting. So maybe it does sound a, a likely thing, and and there is a, quite a pent up demand for a, a, a cheaper Surface laptop. Yeah, so I think this is going to take the way that the Surface Go is a lower cost version of a Surface Pro. Yeah. Then this device, I think it's thirteen point. 0.5 inch screen uh in, in basically a cheaper smaller surface laptop yeah uh, aimed at the education market perhaps uh, running windows 10 in s mode yeah <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate but i i can understand why they do that um it, it doesn't take long to unlock it i mean i think you can you, you can buy an in, in sort of in place upgrade to take it to to full Windows 10, can't you? Windows 10 yeah. Pro. Although for most people, I don't think the only reason to take it to Pro nowadays, I think, is for remote desktop and for domain joining. Yeah, like, which a lot of people don't oh, do. Hyper-V. Hyper-V, Maybe yeah. Hyper-V, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, the people on, on a do, Swift laptop, yeah. Yeah, on, on that on that base level like laptop, would you, is that actually really something you're going to be doing that much of? I mean, it's not going to be a development machine. It's going to be no. that office school type machine. So yeah. yeah. I, I, th- I mean, there's definitely definitely some. I've I've certainly heard some demand for that that sort of size size laptop and uh, and at a cheaper cost. So yeah, yeah, I think I think it would sell sell well. That the Surface Go, I think, is the best selling Surface device, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's down to the price, but you're getting a decent uh, quality device from that. I uh, say what I did on my Surface Pro Four. I mean, my Surface Pro Four is the one that I've had for well, obviously since it came out. Um, it, it was apart from, until I got the laptop. It was my main device, um, and it's been getting slower and slower. And I was finding that it was all the battery was always flat, 
So mm-hmm. charge it up, use it for a bit, put it away, come back to it, flat. So I've been going to the event viewer and all that kind of stuff working out, and all I can see is that it goes to sleep when you put it when you close the lid and then wakes up immediately. All right. And stays on and the screen's off, but you know, in the internals and I could see it through the event viewer. Anyway, I've faffed around and removed some stuff because I've installed all sorts of rubbish on there over the over the last few years. So I um did a cloud recovery today and that ah. seems to have cured the problem. So oh, that's good. Uh, it was an application issue, I guess, or a driver. Um, mm. but it feels fantastically fast now. <laughs> it's amazing that was a clean install of Windows ten. Oh, um, it's such a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. It just feel really good. So and I've got this like it feels like a brand new image, perfect perfect good nick as well. So it feels like a brand new machine that I've I've gained. <laughs> uh, I got, uh, that that's got going on release preview. So Excellent. Uh, uh, yeah. I wonder what we we talked the, the week I was I was uh, departing was um we were spent spent a little bit of time on on smartwatches didn't we? Yes. And I said, said I was getting another one for doing and there it is. This is the Huawei Watch GT2, which uh, is quite an interesting piece of kit. Mm. Really nice screen on it. It's really bright. Yeah, just nice and clear that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you do have an option of an all eyes on display. I, I haven't got that on, but you can also set how long it stays when you actually activate it. So I've, I've set it for a minute there, so it didn't keep disappearing off the screen, but it will turn off. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's not got the apps that your watch has got, um, but it has, it does have, a, uh, I've just charged it, which is the first time I've charged it since I got it, which was the day after we last had our show. So that's two weeks, basically. So yeah. Um, you struggle to get that on a uh, Wear device or a Galaxy to a watch. Uh, yeah. So and it and it does the trick. I mean, it, it certainly does all the health type stuff. Um, it doesn't do a lot more than that Halo one I was talking about a couple of weeks back, which was really cheap. This is slightly more expensive. It's about 100 and something pounds, but it's a it's definitely a much better built device. Um, and the screen, as I say, is absolutely lovely. You can sort of see all the bits it does. It's uh, it's got a lot of features on it. Yeah, yeah it looks nice though. And it does does things like um, it's got an altimeter on it. It's got compass. It does um, SpO2, which is the oxygen rate, which mm. is one thing that they they always say you should be checking, um, which um, is really good. So yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. It's very comfortable. Uh, fits my wrist nicely, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing. And it's got the best flashlight of anything I've ever worked with. Because <laughs> one 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 button press and you've got a blinding light. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's, but it is really useful for um, getting just that that ability to just turn so it on and have a torch. It's, it's amazing that like, you spend 160 quid on a torch, basically. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's I've seen, bit, yeah. it, it looks a nice little device. That I've seen them. Um, I wonder, did you know anything about the Microsoft Expressive Pixels? I've heard this twice today. Someone said, well, do you know? <laughs> I still don't yeah. know what it is. <laughs> well, that was good. Because I was going to ask you about this. Because I see this looks like a little LED, LCD type display thing. LED display. Um, and it looks like a little, L, a little custom display for putting emojis. Yeah, and there's an Im- uh, pixels uh, expressive pixels app that you can design these emojis, and then you need some hardware to run them on, which looks a bit like a you know a little LED display, not unlike the one that I got for the Raspberry Pi. I remember I was doing all the playing about with displays on there, but I couldn't exactly see um, what hardware you, you whether you could just buy off the shelf hardware for this or. Or, um, or what you needed to do. I know that the Adafruit and Silicon Square d- displays make these things, so I guess you can do them. And they communicate. I think you plug them in via USB, and it picks them up. Um, but an interesting little designer tool that you can do it. But I wonder whether um, you can actually do custom code on that, and uh, you know, and have this thing plugged into your PC, so you could get like notifications and things like that on it. So it's something that I, I've, I'm on my list to. To investigate, yeah, it's, it's definitely so worth playing with. I, I, I hadn't seen seen that. I just had a quick look at it, and yeah, that looks really interesting. Yeah, so I'll include a link for that in the show notes. So maybe we can t- have a, try and figure it out and have a uh, look at it next week. But it it's about it says a platform for creativity, inclusion, and innovation. 
It's a like uh, a research project, isn't it? So I think so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it looks interesting. I mean, one thing I did notice out in Berlin was an awful lot of people running around with face masks with LEDs. So yeah. <laughs> I thought that because that display I've got is brilliant on the Pi, but I couldn't figure how to. I could, I, the Pi I could put a little microphone in, and I thought of you know I could actually animate a, a, a mouth mm. on the thing, but it's a little bit clumsy to have a full Raspberry Pi four on the yeah. stuck on your, your face mask. But I thought if you could, you can get these displays now so thin that you could mm. sort of embed it into a thing and into a into a mask, and I'm, I thought that would be a good use case. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a good idea. Yeah, so maybe because I thought it, it has a bit of emotion, you know, with, if you've got an animated mouth or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'll have to have a look at that. So maybe we can uh, see if we can find out some more information on that uh, next week. All right, what else have we got? Oh, just a quick update on the Surface earbuds that I'm using now. Yeah. Um, we've got a firmware update on Friday. Fantastic! The, the, your headphones now get a firmware update, and I was even more impressed when I got the device because the case got a firmware update as well. So not only did the headphones get an update, the case <laughs> gets a firmware update. Everything gets a firmware update nowadays. I know on Friday I got an update, and uh, it said check the release notes, and of course took the link, and the release notes don't have the changed log on it of course <laughs> yeah, microsoft release notes what did you expect <laughs> yeah so um these are the 3.0 3.06 now um and the release notes only had 3.05 so anyway 3.06 uh, so i thought i'll try and find out so i did actually contact microsoft well i first contacted surface the uh U surface uk account who then through some magic of some crm type solution that they must have in the background i ended up getting a direct message from microsoft support mm -hmm. <laughs> saying have you got a problem with your surface earbuds and I was, well no not a problem as such i was just curious i wasn't you know <laughs> uh, logging a support ticket or anything anyway turns out there is a, an update in it and the earbuds now have the ability to switch off um the apex it was ap oh, i forget it's right aptx in yeah aptex yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you've got the option to switch off Aptex and then it falls back to SBS support, yeah. which having to do some searching on that one, it turns out that that increases your battery life because it's a lower yeah. uh, quality yeah, level. It's low, lower quality. I mean, I, I, I'd keep with Aptex, but, but if you're doing, yeah. I mean, if you're listening to something like a, a book or something, an e, uh, audio book, then I, I can see SBS being perfectly adequate and would leave, give you much better, better battery life. Mm. But uh, I am. Um, I've I've left mine on the Aptex because I like the higher quality mode, um, mm. and I but I don't have any issues with the battery life. They last me it, they last a full day at work anyway. Um, you know, not constant use, but you know, pretty much constant use. And then I tend to put you know when I go on a call or, or something like that, or a phone call. Um, mm. Yeah, I put them back in the case, and then when I go back on the next Teams call, I use them or I'm listening to some music. I put I use them, so but they're still I last all day anyway. But anyway, it's just a nice little update. But I think what a world we live in now, where cases and headphones and things get yeah, oh, get 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 firmware updates. Yeah, yeah, even it's these a... um, these little switch bots that I've got for uh, switch, turning them light, they have firmware updates. <laughs> even even my thermometer in the greenhouse got a, th a firmware update. <laughs> Everything is firmware updates. Yeah. Oh, to talk about taking calls, that's one thing I forgot about to say about this watch. It's actually got a speaker built into it and a microphone. So you can do the full Dick Tracy talk to your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> that's, actually... that's interesting. Yeah. The um, Galaxy Watch does that, but the the um, Active doesn't have the yeah. have that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I could really get myself to doing it, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you could. <laughs> I have I think... done it <laughs> just just because it was I was I, I, it was instinctive actually and I was uh, at the event I had the phone tucked away and I, I was in a bag bag and I couldn't get to it very quickly so I just pressed the button and spoke started speaking to some to the people I needed it's actually my taxi so, so mm -hmm. I, I needed to know where they were but yeah it, it's it, it works it works pretty well actually the speaker quality was surprisingly good I, I might actually. I've even you. I even used it in the hotel room to give me some background music. Yeah. Play, playing on the on the watch watch directly, um, which is also what I'd normally do. The speakers. I mean, the speakers not that brilliant, but it's 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 as good as some cheap Bluetooth speakers. So yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's quite funny now with the devices, especially with the in ear earbuds now, and they get smaller and smaller. That 
you can pe- see people talking. You think they're talking to you, they're not. They're talking on the uh, hands-free call with using yeah. earbuds. Yeah. Um, and especially if some people leave them in as well and still talk to you. So it's mm-hmm. getting very confusing now, whether they speak to you or they're, they're on another call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I have to, um, when I'm in the office, in the past when I was using the you know, a normal headset with a, a boom sort of mic, people would come up to your desk and see that you're on a call because you, you've got the headset on. But yeah. with the Surface earbuds, they don't really notice that you've got a yeah. call, so they just come and talk to you and you're in the middle of a call. So. Yeah. Need but, well, so you, you need that sign you were going to do, so in, in yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So I need to do that. that uh, if I could, I'm sure I could do. I could, you could do that. That's one of those things, those little emoji panels would be quite good for, if it could link yeah. in with your team status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely, there's, I mean, there's definitely ways to do. It. There's a, there's quite a good bit, bit of code out there for doing team status and pushing yeah. it to other things. So yeah, yeah, maybe um, I can do that. Um, some Windows Insider news. We had a couple of updates on builds, and one that's quite interesting actually. Two o two o six, which was a dev channel build last week. Um, so that's not tied to a particular release. That's got the new keyboard. And the emoji panel. Mm. Uh, now, they did the usual thing. This is A/B testing, so not many people actually got this. Um, I didn't get this, but I know a way of bringing it back. So I don't <laughs> want to. Because it's not really very good to mess with your system. Yeah. I take the risk on myself. Um, and so I got mine working. It, it, it's essentially it's the one that's on Windows 10X. So if you've used the Windows 10X uh, on-screen keyboard, you, you'll recognize it. But it's got a new dictation mode, which actually works really well. Um, it's got the cloud clipboard built into it as well. So, so not, it's called cloud clipboard. It's actually just, it's not in the cloud as in sh- shares between your devices, but it is really useful because it's clipboard history. And I think that's what they call it now, actually, not cloud clipboard. Um, that keyboard history, I've got really used to use it now. I use it all the time. Mm makes a big difference to your, to your workflow if you start using that. So forget the old Control V, use the Windows V and you get your little history. But anyway, on the, on the, it's built into the new keyboard. Um, it's got a very nice idea that I think uh, some other, I think I, I've seen it on iOS and Android, is when you've got the on-screen keyboard and you get the space bar, you, know, you can move your finger up and down on the space bar and it moves the cursor. Mm. So if you're in the, um, say you're in a URL box and you, and you want to, scroll to the left you can just keep your finger on the space bar and move it left so on a device like the surface go it works really well rather than trying to use the arrow keys or tap with your finger to get the input point to the right place um so it, it really nice uh, on screen keyboard um i say it's got emojis animated gifs you can put straight in as well yeah. um so you can get so a, a, a more modern keyboard i said taken straight from windows 10x i think I hope they roll it out to some more users. I know it's not tied to a specific release, so I don't think it'll hit 20H2, but it, it will probably hit the next Windows 10. But then it, they've been quite good at modularizing these things, so you never know. It could just appear in um, in 20H2. But I think that was the main change of the build, but um, it actually makes it on a tablet much easier to use with the on-screen keyboard. Uh, what else did we get? Oh, we had a... a, a, a Build update tonight for 20H2. So just as we came to record this evening, there was um, an update. Not not a huge amount. There were just security changes around that. Um, I think 20H2 is pretty much done now. Yeah, and I think so. When's Patch Tuesdays? Today? Yeah, today, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess those will get the... Um, I don't know. I don't think it'll roll out today. Maybe next or maybe next month, October, something like that. But I think it's pretty much done. They, they did put out an optional update last week for uh, 20H1, the May uh, update, uh, which took the build to 19041, 448. And there was a whole ton of fixes in that. Big long list. I would imagine that's probably in the update that goes out today. Yeah, one would hope so. Uh, yeah. It makes perfect sense of that. They the made case. the optional ones, and then the week yeah. later, I think. Yeah. Or whether they just have the they they slipstream those into the next one. I can't remember because they've not been doing those optional ones for a while. Mm. Um, they stopped doing them for a bit, didn't they? Now now we're back on with those as well. So we've had quite a lot of uh, of updates to the sort of incremental builds. Um, it would be nice to see 
sort of 20 h2 ship now and see what we're getting next various rumors around at the moment that we might not get a major update in the first half of next year as they're working on windows 10x and, with, and, and windows 10 might get the major update later in the year yeah yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely interesting because I mean, obviously, I heard that I had that panel thing when, when in, in IFA panel thing, but I think the the um, I've also heard a lot of rumours that they're working heavily on ARM stuff at the moment, so that may well, as you say, may impact the, the normal process of, of Windows 10. Yeah, and I, I I think if if that rumour is that they're going to release Windows 10X in the sort of first half of next year, spring next year, that would mm. make sense them to focus on that. Yeah. Um, but it seems a good um, a good way to update Windows 10 is to get those completed modules and bring them across, like they're done with the keyboard, the notifications, mm. the start you know start mm. menus, some of the start menu stuff to bring it over. So maybe that's the way that they can do the testing and, and bring it over. So with, uh, 20H2, I, I think, is looking like a nice update. I know there's there's very little core changes, but there's got the nice the improvement to the start menu and i always quite like these 20 the sort of the, the the second the minor ones because they they take the stability of you get the the features of the first one with the stabilities of having some spent some time on it so is it yeah. from a from an enterprise point of view those are the ones i like rolling out um mm. so you know not too quick to jump on the may 2020 update but this one i'm quite happy with because it's the may 2020 update plus uh, fixes yeah so, yeah which is good uh, yeah, so I think that quite that works quite well. Um, yeah, so that was that was the. Um, so I did a video as well of uh, twenty uh, two oh six, which is uh, on my YouTube channel, along with a little unboxing video today, a little treat one of me unboxing my uh, Windows Insider. Inside. Yeah, I don't usually, yeah do these, but I thought it'd be quite nice to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I I haven't done mine mine this year. I have got my kit as well. But, uh, yeah, you you've been doing it a few years now, haven't you? You've been because you're an, yeah. you've been an MVP MVP longer than I have back in the the old Windows media center yes. and devices and entertainment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think my oldest. I think what when was it? Two thousand seven, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've added the twenty twenty one to my little Windows Insider. Uh, yeah. stand which is which is really nice to get uh, they're, they're always nice to get I mean you don't get a it's not like a massive benefit from getting them it's just a recognition thing it's very nice and nice to be part of the community yeah and um, it's also I mean you do get you do get some inside line or something so which is nice yeah not as much not as much as people might think we do but <laughs> yeah well we could tell you but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's really. It's a nice community to be involved with. That's that's one thing yeah. I've discovered. Yeah, uh, we do get some good like calls with the various groups, product groups as well. There was an interesting one with a. I think it was Office last week. Not normally something I would participate because it's not really my area, but I was sort of invited to. It. I thought, oh, I'll go and have a look. Actually, some quite interesting stuff on there because you tend. I tend not to pay attention as much with the Office stuff, but <laughs> uh, from my day point job, really, I should do so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amazing how with Office 365 how they're doing those f fast regular updates now as well, and they're yeah, packing those features into it. Yeah, that that and Edge. I mean, the two they yeah. just move at, at a pace now. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're on the Dev Channel, mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a new build, yeah. and always pretty stable as well. Even though I mean, they've had a couple of issues, and I have the other builds around just in case. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, as Canary, actually, I'm I'm using uh, you know, mm. up, updated virtually every day. Yeah, yeah, very good. Something else I wanted to mention as well, Gary, you've coming up. We've got some really good interviews that you've grabbed for us. Yeah, so we had we had we had a couple of these on on the tales of, of uh, the shows the last well, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, with the one from Jill and uh, also the the the, the, the one you, I hope you enjoyed about about the EV racing series. series. Oh, <laughs> you? Um, I think you posted a tweet, or maybe when I followed them anyway. They they've taken the vehicle out. It was at one of the tracks. I yeah, think it was at Zolder, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so Beth mm -hmm. tweeted about that. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. if you haven't heard that one, go back and listen to it because it's really interesting. But yes, yeah, so, so I, I've been doing this this series of interviews, um, basically the state of VVs in the UK and slightly beyond the the UK, and and uh, we'll we we'll be tacking those onto the end of shows for the next few weeks because decided that it's probably a bit too long to put out as just one show because it's there's five hours of material there so we're going to space it out over the next few yeah. shows so so listen out over the next few weeks at the end of the shows you can always skip us 
talking on at the start of the show, this goes directly to the interviews. If that's what you're interested in, but that's coming up coming up shortly. Yeah, I think that'll be good to, to hear that on. Or a couple of other things that not directly related, but I do want to mention. If you're a sci-fi fan, uh, Battlestar Galactica, um, the reboot one, the 2003 on to 2006 or seven or something like yeah. that that series is on iplay i'm sorry for us listeners or non-uk listeners but um it's all on iplayer so you know free no subscription apart from a tv license but um yeah so if you've never seen that definitely worth worth t- yeah, t- definitely checking worth it out. Watching. yeah um especially if you've got any interest in ai and uh and that yeah. kind of those grand concepts as yeah as well in there that they're really good fun very well uh, <laughs> And uh, something else which is slightly different than in the sci-fi spectrum, on Britbox they've put Space 1999. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moonbase Alpha. <laughs> yeah. uh, which which is brilliant and hilarious, but um, depending on your age, you'll either find uh, you're laughably hilarious, or if you're a similar age to us, it'll bring back childhood memories. But actually it's watching them, you know, now as opposed to when we when we watched them as kids, actually some interesting stuff in there. How they visage, you know, the fact that they could get these technology where they could have moon bases and everything else, but the computer systems use ticker tape, yeah, and no <laughs> and no sign of a keyboard anywhere. So they've yeah. got these. I, I like the fact they don't call it computer system; they call it computer. So it says, "I'll check with computer, not a computer or the computers. It's computer as a character, as, yeah. as a person." And yeah. um, when they interact with it, there's a little panel, panel of but, panel of buttons, and they just kind of mash these buttons, and then this ticker tape comes out, uh, and then they read that. But of course, this computer's doing amazing things, controlling a life support system with gravity, but they couldn't have caught with an idea of a screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe that was the next generation user interface i mean yeah if we're going back in time time on shows i mean if you look at you know, I, I, for some reason on one of the plane trips i took last year they were showing the whole series of ufo that's on Britbox box as well that's yeah which, which which is really good i have to say that the quality of that series and it was excellent um, but you actually look at the computer system all there. It's way more advanced than the Space 1999. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, interesting stuff. It may, it's amazing. I, I do like watching sci-fi, especially 70s and 60s and 70s, but how they thought, I mean, obviously, Space 1999 is set in 1999, and we didn't have a moon base alpha in 1999 in September. <laughs> and, you know, and, we're, and we're still a, a way off, and we haven't got those sort of eagle ships that they use and everything else. But then, on the, you know, on the things that they didn't predict, we were you know ai and computers and stuff just totally you know miss but i like how some science fiction get it right and this kind of on that side got it wrong and but uh interesting concepts in there anyway yeah, but, yeah so, definitely definitely um some of the fashion sense uh, is very 1970s <laughs> we were wearing <laughs> nylon flares <laughs> oh yeah well that's the, that was the future <laughs> uh, yeah so I'm waiting for my uh, my uh, computers to be replaced with ticker tape, and we'll all start wearing nylon flares, and then I'll feel well, like we're... I, I have to say, say that apparently the seventies are the next big trend, so maybe <laughs> nylon flares will come back in. <laughs> I think, yeah, and I think being a, a sort of child of the seventies, some of that decor um, and the oranges and the browns and everything, yeah. when when I was sort of you know growing up in the eighties, you know that looks so old-fashioned and terrible you know when we were watching Miami Vice and the old all the, the 80 styles but when I look at it now I think yeah, it's got a kind of coolness to it those <laughs> curved plastic white, white plastics and oranges and they even have some cups I think that they, they were, were uh, like a, a 70s design icon and things you know it's, uh, it's got a certain look to it that I quite like so yeah. maybe that that's that's what I'm gonna, do. I'm gonna go downstairs now uh, replace some of my TVs with ticker tape get the flares out and get some uh, orange carpets <laughs> <laughs> well um, so anyway I recommend that if you're on Britbox there's a lot of good science fiction uh, UFOs on there as well and uh, so all, all Doctor Who's on there as well all the classic Doctor Who's on there so if you really want to enjoy your science fiction there's plenty to be going on with or you can go on iPlayer and go a bit more modern with Battlestar Galactica but, but even that's what 17 years old I think the original yeah. pilot episode crazy isn't uh, it yeah yeah um, uh, I think there's another reboot of that coming but I don't know yeah. right well I think that's the time we've got now I'm going to go and get get into my uh, eagle and yeah, yeah. <laughs> head back to Commander Koenig uh, so where can we find you 
You can find me on Twitter at, at Gary WMA with two R's in the Gary. Um, and I'll tweet about all the stuff I'm doing. And obviously on the iPost owner channel, which has got a few bits and pieces on that. And the fascinating tech video channel will be coming with a few things in a few, in a few weeks. So uh, we've got to, got, I've, also, I've obviously got, hopefully a lot of the, the video I actually took at uh, EFA or IFA will be, be on there fairly shortly. Um, oh, that's good. So that's, I've, that's, got, that's um, I've got a few videos to do. I've got some Galaxy bud light things to take care and i've got this switch bot video to do i mean little yeah. thermometer that's... Yeah. so plenty to come so right well hopefully we're back same time same place next week uh yeah. which will be back to stop us wandering discussing star space 1999 It'll keep us on track so yeah. i'll see you next week take care thanks to gary we'll be back same time same place next week you can email me in at the i'm at i sticks on twitter thanks for listening thanks for watching